Welcome again everyone. This video covers the solving quadratics test review. Let's start with number one. It says factor completely. We have 8x to the third minus 27 and that can be written as 2x raised to the third power minus 3 to the third power which means it follows the difference of cubes formula. So a in the formula is going to be replaced with 2x b in the formula will be 3. So now a minus b becomes 2x minus 3. a squared in the formula becomes 4x squared. a times b is 2x times 3 which is 6x and b squared is 3 squared which is 9. And so your answer is 2x minus 3 times 4x squared plus 6x plus 9. Let's look at number two. First, I would work it out the way I did it here, where I factor out a four, because four can go into 36 also. So let's factor out a four as the greatest common factor, leaving us with x squared minus nine. Now x squared minus nine, those are both perfect squares, so they follow the difference of squares formula, which is going to be a minus b times a plus b. a in the formula is x, and b in the formula is going to be 3 because 3 squared is 9. So that's going to be 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 3, which follows the difference of squares formula. For number 3, we have to use the a times c method and solve by grouping. So a is 2, c is negative 6. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And then what two numbers multiply to negative 12 but add up to negative 11 would be negative 12 and 1. So in the first group would be 2x squared minus 12x. And in the second group would be 1x minus 6. The GCF in the first group is 2x, leaving you with x minus 6. The GCF in the second group is 1, leaving you with x minus 6. So the common factor now is x minus 6, so you factor that out and that leaves you with the 2x plus 1. So your answer is x minus 6 times 2x plus 1. Here's number 4. Again, we're going to multiply the a times the c. We're solving by factoring. So 2 times 10 is 20, and the two numbers that multiply to 20 but also add up to 9 is 5 and 4. So in the first group, it will be 2x squared plus 5x plus the second group would be 4x plus 10. Greatest common factor in the first group is x, leaving you with 2x plus 5. The greatest common factor in the second group is 2, leaving you with 2x plus 5. Then the final factoring is going to be 2x plus 5 times x plus 2. We're setting that equal to 0, so if 2x plus 5 is 0, then x would be negative 5 over 2. And if x plus 2 is 0, then x would be negative 2. Here's number 5. Um, we're going to subtract 16 from both sides to set it equal to 0. And then multiply the a times c. 3 times negative 16 is negative 48. And the two numbers that multiply to negative 48 but add up to negative 8 is negative 12 and 4. So in the first group would be 3x squared minus 12x and the second group would be 4x minus 16. The GCF in the first group is 3x leaving you with x minus 4 and the greatest common factor in the second group is 4 leaving you with x minus 4. So the complete factorization would be x minus 4 times 3x plus 4 and we set that equal to 0. When you solve the 3x plus 4 equals 0, you would subtract 4 and divide by 3, so you'd get negative 4 thirds. And when you solve x minus 4 equals 0, you get x equals 4. Alright, to solve number 6 by factoring, we'll need to subtract 7 and also add 40x to set it equal to 0. The result would be 7x squared plus 40x plus 25. Multiplying 7 times 25 is 175, 
and the two numbers would be 35 and 5 because they multiply to 175 and add to 40. So in the first group you'll have 7x squared plus 35x and the second group will be 5x plus 25. Greatest common factor in the first group is 7x, leaving you with x plus 5. Greatest common factor in the second group is 5, leaving you with x plus 5. And so the complete factoring would be x plus 5 times 7x plus 5. Setting each one of these equal to 0 and then solving for x, if you solve 7x plus 5 equals 0, you would subtract 5 and then divide by 7 to get negative 5 sevenths. And if x plus 5 is 0, then x is going to be negative 5. For number 7, it says to solve by completing the square. So we subtract 10 from both sides. And then we have to fill in the blank space by taking half of negative 8 and squaring it. So half of negative 8 is 4, negative 4. Squaring it is positive 16. So we'll add 16 to both sides. Factoring the left side gives us x minus 4 times x minus 4, which is x minus 4 squared. Adding negative 10 and 16 gives us 6. We then take the square root of both sides. That leaves us with x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Then we have to move the, the negative 4 over to the right by adding it. So x would be 4 plus or minus the square root of 6. Number 8, again solving by completing the square. Um, the 5 is already on the right side, so all we need to do is add the blank spaces on the left and the right. We take half of the negative 4, which is negative 2, and we square that. That gives us positive 4, which we add on both sides. Factoring the left side is x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. Then 5 plus 4 is 9 on the right. We'll take the square root of both sides to get x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is plus or minus 3. Now we need to move the 2 over by adding it, so x is positive 2 plus or minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 2 plus 3 is 5. Alright, in order to solve by completing the square, the leading coefficient has to be a 1, so we need to divide everything by 2 first. So that gives us x squared plus 3 over 2x plus 5 equals 0. Then you want to move the 5 over to the right by subtracting it. Now we fill in the blank spaces by taking half of 3 over 2, and half of 3 over 2 is 3 over 4, and then you have to square that, which would give you 9 sixteenths. So we add 9 sixteenths to both sides. Factoring the left side is x plus 3 over 4 times x plus 3 over 4, which is x plus 3 fourths squared. We have to combine the negative 5 with the fraction 9 sixteenths. So we have to convert negative 5 into a fraction, and that would be negative 80 over 16. Negative 80 over 16 plus 9 over 16 is negative 71 over 16. Let's take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 3 fourths is plus or minus the square root of negative 71 divided by the square root of 16. The i comes out because the square root's negative, and then the square root of 16 on the bottom is 4. So we have plus or minus i squared of 71 over 4. The last step would be to move the 3 fourths over to the right by subtraction. So our final answer is x equals negative 3 fourths plus or minus i radical 71 over 4. Starting with number 10, we're solving using square roots. So we would have to add 10 to both sides. 10 plus 15 is 25. Then you'll have to divide by 2. So x squared is 25 over 2. Now we take the square root of both sides. So x is plus or minus the square root of 75 divided by the square root of 2. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 2 is on the bottom, but you can't leave radicals in the denominator, so you'll multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. That leaves you with plus or minus 5 square root of 2 over 2 as your final answer. All right, again, solving by square roots. 
So we'll move the 9 over by adding it. Then we'll have to divide by negative 3 on both sides. So that gives us x minus 1 squared equals negative 3. All right, then we'll take the square root, which gives us x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 3, which is plus or minus i squared to 3. Then you have to move the 1 over by adding it. So x is 1 plus or minus i squared to 3. And for number 12, we're solving by the square root method. First, we'll subtract 3. 3 from the 13 leaves you with 10. Now we have to divide by the fraction 2 fifths. Well, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 over 2. So we multiply the 5 over 2 times the 10. Well, 5 times 10 is 50, and then divide by 2 and you get 25. Now we'll take the square root. So x minus 2 is plus or minus the square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5. Then you need to move the 2 over to the right by adding. So x is going to be 2 plus or minus 5. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and 2 plus 5 is 7. For number 13, we're solving using the quadratic formula. So that means you have to get everything on the left and set it equal to 0 on the right. To do that, we'll add positive 3x squared, we'll add 2x, and we'll subtract 1, all from both sides. The result is 5x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 0. The A value is 5, the B value is 2, and C is 3. Quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And you here we just plugged in those numbers. Um, 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 5 times 3 is negative 60. 4 minus 60 is negative 56. Negative 56 can be simplified to 2 radical 14. So that's negative 2 plus or minus 2i radical 14. We bring the i out because we have the negative in the radical. So it's negative 2 plus or minus 2i squared of 14 all over 10. And then everything can be reduced by dividing by 2. So your final answer is negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared of 14 over 5. For number 14, we're solving by the quadratic formula again. So we have to set the right side equal to 0. So we'll add positive 2x squared. We'll also add 3x. And we'll also subtract 6 from both sides. The result is 3x squared plus 7x minus 6 equals 0. A is 3, B is 7, and C is negative 6. And this is what you get when you plug in those numbers into the quadratic formula. 7 squared is 49. And then negative 4 times 3 times negative 6 is 72. 49 plus 72 is 121. And the square root of 121 is 11. Negative 7 minus 11 is negative 18. Divided by 6 would be negative 3. Negative 7 plus 11 is positive 4. And that'll be 4 over 6, which is going to reduce to 2 thirds. For 15, it says solve using any method. I'm choosing the square root method because I see x is squared here. And there, that is the only variable in the problem. So let's start by adding 10 to both sides. 10 plus 11 is 21. Then let's divide by 4. So x squared is 21 over 4. Then let's take the square root of both sides. So that's x is plus or minus the square root of 21 over the square root of 4 which is plus or minus the square root of 21 over 2. I chose the factoring method for number 16. So I want the right side to become 0. So I'll subtract 2x from both sides and also subtract 3 from both sides. The result is going to be 2x squared minus 2x. All right, so then now we factor out the 2x here because it's the common factor, leaving you with x minus 1. Now we set both of those equal to 0. So we have 2x equals 0. And when you solve that, you get x equals 0. Also, you'll solve x minus 1 equals 0. 
so you get x is equal to 1. For number 17, I'm choosing to complete the square. We'll need to move the negative 11 over to the right by adding 11, and then we fill in the blank spaces by taking half of 6 and squaring it. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So we'll add 9 to both sides. Factoring the left side gives us x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is x plus 3 squared, and 11 plus 9 is 20. Now let's take the square root of both sides, so x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 20, which is plus or minus 4 times 5, which is plus or minus 2 radical 5. Now we move the 3 over to the right by subtraction, so x is negative 3 plus or minus 2 radical 5. For number 18, I chose factoring, so we need to move everything from the right over back over to the left. So we'll um, add 3x squared to both sides and we'll subtract 6x from both sides. That leaves us with 8x squared minus 8x minus 6 equals 0. Let's divide by 2 um, everywhere just to make the number smaller. So that gives us 4x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Now with factoring you'll want to multiply the a times the c so 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And then the two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that would also add up to negative 4 is negative 6 and 2. So on the next step, we have our two groups, which would be 4x squared minus 6x, and then 2x minus 3. The greatest common factor in the first group is 2x, leaving you with 2x minus 3. The greatest common factor in the second group is 1, leaving you with 2x minus 3. So the complete factoring is 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 1, and you set those equal to 0. If you solve the 2x plus 1 equals 0, you would subtract 1 and divide by 2 and get negative 1 half. To solve 2x minus 3 equals 0, you would add 3 and divide by 2, and you get positive 3 halves. I'm going to use the square root method because I see that we have x minus 3 all squared. So to use the square root method, I would want to divide both sides by the negative 4. So I would have x minus 3 squared equals 18 over negative 4, which reduces to negative 9 over 2. The next step would be to take the square root of both sides. So x minus 3 is plus or minus the square root of negative 9 over the square root of 2. The square root of negative 9 is 3i over the square root of 2. We have to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2, and so that would give us on the top uh, plus or minus 3i radical 2, and on the bottom you would just have 2. Now we'd have to move the negative 3 over by adding it to both sides, so x would be 3 plus or minus 3i radical 2 all over 2. Something else you're going to see on the test is what we discussed on day 11, and so let's just review that really quick. Um, for, look at number 1 here, the comment for number 1. It says, what do you notice about the number of real solutions and the value of the discriminant for the first function? So remember the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, and in, uh, for number 1 it was negative 12 squared minus 4 times 2 times 10. It came out to be a positive 64 and you notice we had two real solutions. So we concluded that if you have um, a, if the discriminant is positive you're going to have two real solutions. In this case the discriminant came out to be negative because um, A was negative 1, B was negative 6, C was negative 9 and if you plug that into the discriminant you end up with 0. And notice here you only have one real solution. So the conclusion is, is that when the discriminant equals zero, you have one real solution. And for the third one, um, you have a is one, b is four, c is seven. You plug those numbers into, into the discriminant and you get a negative 12. And you notice that we have zero real solutions because the graph does not cross the x-axis. 
So you have zero real solutions, but you, you have two imaginary solutions. So just to recap, um, when the discriminant is positive, there's going to be two real roots, two real solutions. When the discriminant equals zero, there was only one real solution. When the discriminant is less than zero or negative, you have no real solutions, but instead you have two imaginary solutions.